Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome once again to The Secrets of the High Demand Coach. And I am here with yet another high demand coach, and that is the one, the only Juan Alvarado. Now, Juan is a highly respected expert in leadership and Gallup uh, certified Clifton Strengths coach. He's a U.S. Army war veteran with a wealth of experience in training teams of thousands of soldiers in high stakes situations. Now, in addition to his military service, Juan has worked with school districts to improve uh, team efficiency and communication. He's helped increase productivity and bring greater employee satisfaction. He helps leaders and teams to overcome complacency and prevent burnout in the work bo- uh, workplace through his Blueprint to Leadership course. Juan's been featured on Fox, on N. NBC and CBS. Ever heard of those? Uh, and uh, he's done so because of his work in creating strength-based leaders and teams, promoting a positive culture in the workplace. Uh, so, Juan, I was so excited to have you here. Uh, I just love you know, sometimes getting uh, pre- prepped for a show. You just get a feel it's going to be a good one, right? And uh, I had that feel going through uh, some of your materials on your website and, and elsewhere. So, before we jump into the work that you do, some of this, these transformational changes that you're able to help create. I'd love for you to just add a little color to this story. How do you go from being in the U.S. Army, from training uh, uh, folks there, to the work that you're doing now in, in leadership training across the country? Yeah, great question. Um, it, if I had to put it in one simple sentence, like divine intervention, right? Like I, I'm a I'm a man of faith, and I feel like God has a plan for my life, and um, what I thought my course of action was, my plan of action was, it was like nope you're going this way. And so, uh, just in the, you know, you hear the saying the right place at the right time. There's been times where I was in the right place at the right time. And there's also times where I was in the wrong place, but in the right time, as far as growth is concerned, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, being able to turn my L's not into losses, but into learned lessons Mm. and growing myself. And I think the, the path was just kind of put before me. Um, it's kind of just kind of what I, I believe in. That's awesome. That's awesome. So then uh, fast forward to today, uh, you're helping folks become more intentional leaders. I'm wondering, uh, d- tell me, what does that mean? What does it mean to be an intentional leader? Yeah. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about like being your why, being your why and, you know, work in purpose and stuff. But I think a lot of people take that as just being the just being the moment, like soak it in. But there's just so much more to it. Um, What do we want to get out of life? What do we want to get out of the experience? What do we want to get out of the relationship? Like really digging into, it's almost like going to a baseball game. Um, I'm excited. I'm a big baseball guy. Uh, Love football. The teams that I was rooting for aren't in it, so I can care less now anymore. Um, But there's something about going to a baseball game and hearing or the smell of the fresh cut grass and the dirt and the pop of the ball into the glove and the the crack of the bat on the ball the cheering of the crowd the hot dog and beer smell like there's just something about the environment i think a lot of people go to work uh, i think a lot of people go through life and they don't take in they see all the negative things right the dude that cuts you off the dude that flipped you the finger on the way to work the traffic that's going so slow and you have, and you're running late. Like you're, you're, you're taking it in, but you're taking it in in such a negative lens, and we're not intentional in. Well, maybe I just need to slow down. You know, maybe God's just telling me to slow down. Like you didn't take time to think today, and when you left your kids to school, you were like, "Hurry up, hurry up, let's go." I'm gonna be late if I don't, if you don't hurry up. Well, what does that do to your kid? What does that do to your relationship? What does that do to your spouse who's looking at you? Raise your voice to your kids, like. We don't, we don't take a sense to smell and to listen to those things. And I don't want it to sound, um, you know, a, a cliche to be like, absorb the moment, but you need to be in the moment because the moment deserves you. And I don't want that to sound cheesy, but it does. Your kids deserve you. Your spouse deserves you. Your employees deserve you. The people who are going to hire you deserve you, but they need all of you. And if you're not a hundred percent there, then then why even show up? And so being intentional is important to me because those people that oversaw my life growing up, like my parents were good parents, but they weren't great. They weren't nowhere near perfect. They were good, but I could have used more of them, right? Um, I could have I could have done better if I had more of them. Uh, yeah. Teachers, people that were um, police officers, like 
uh, this is something else I didn't put in the, in the bio, but I was a police officer for a couple of years. There's, there's times where you could have gotten more from your leaders and they didn't, and leaders didn't show up that day. So, which is why I do what I do. Let's be intentional. And you're, I've learned from a buddy of mine named Rory Vaden that says you are best positioned to serve the person that you once were. And so I am now trying to serve leaders so they can serve the five-year-old one, the 14, the 15, the 16-year-old one, the 18-year-old one, the 21-year-old one that needed that better leader in their life. My job now is to make sure that I teach intentionality to those people so we can have a, a better future of leaders. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. What would you say are some of the hallmarks of intentional leaders? Uh, I know that this is a, it's a kind of like a buzzword now when people are talking about, um, being emotionally there, being empathetic, but you can't be, uh, it, not everyone can be empathetic. I'm a, you know, a, a certified Gallup strengths coach. And one of the strengths is empathy. Empathy for me, I think is number 11 or 12. So it's not one that's readily available to me. And for a lot of people in leadership position is not readily available. So how do we intentionally use our strengths to kind of, uh, it's kind of like uh, when you go to other countries and your uh, phone charger, your laptop charger, it's different than the wall outlet. And so you need a converter. What strengths can we use to convert our strengths into some some form of being empathy, uh, of having being empathetic? And, um, but I think one of the big hallmarks is not just being empathetic to how the person feels and how you feel, but really leaning in on who do they want to become? If they're under me, I, as a leader have to shift from being a leader to servant leadership, then to being a steward. And I think that's where the pinnacle of leadership is, is how do I take you, right? Scott's going to be one of your one of your staff. Scott, where do you want to go? And I have to make it my business. I have to make your business my business. Mm. Where do you want to go? And if I'm your coach, just like any father-son relationship, father-daughter, mother, mother-son, mother-daughter, like where do you want to go? It is my job. Like again, man of faith, God's put you into my lane to help you. So how can I help you? How can I serve you? But how can I take my job and my time with you so seriously that I'm helping you get to the next step. Um, and so I think that's a, a huge hallmark in that. I think the next part of, piece of that to me is just as important and is pretty much similar is I need to lead myself out of a job. I have to lead you to push me out of my job. That's when your leadership is complete. When you can do my job at, at a level better than I could, then mm. I've done a hell of a job. And then what do I do? It's time for me to move up. He, you got to take my spot. Now I move up or I go to another company and do the same thing for other people. And so that Hallmark piece is like, love your staff so much where you're taking them and you're le basically leading yourself out of a position. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, so one of the, the things that I think where there's a little pushback sometimes on on you know, showing up with love and, and what can feel, it isn't, but it can feel soft is how do you do this when folks are underperforming, right? What does an, an intentional leader do to help their team members maybe continue to feel valued or appreciated even when they're un underperforming? Yeah. So um, I think it's Jim Rohn that talks about you have to love grass, but you also have to hate weeds. He says, you have to love like, you have to love like a mother, but hate like a father. And that's the example that he gives. And I'm like, wow, that's strong words. Hate like a father. Like, mm. wow. But he gives the example of love grass, hate weeds. And that's just a comparison. And when you think about a father, you think about, um, you know, protecting. I think I saw an episode of you, uh, one that, uh, you did, did not too long ago with two gentlemen. And they were talking about like, wives don't just need a protector. They want a provider or some, something along those lines, right? But it's the same thing with, with uh, leadership, right? You have to be able to love on your people, but then you have to be, you have to hold that line and say, nope, sorry, here's our standard. And so I love having this conversation, especially when we onboard of like, th this is the standard. You have to live above the standard, this much above the standard or this much above the standard. 
but the standard is to be above it. Bottom line. Right. If you ever go below it, we're going to have a talk. And my job is to bring you back up. It is just like the reflectors or the lines in the road that let you know that you're going off the road. You hear to-doon, 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 or the brrrr, and then you have to, you have to course correct. I'm going to allow you to course correct. However, I'm also like that center divider. If you go too far, there's going to be a bump. Yeah. I might have to bump you. I might have to nudge you. If you're not ready for it and you're not ahead of it, there could be some damage. My job is to be damage control. As little damage as possible to make sure that you're in your lane and let's go. The other, the other example I give is, is like a, it's like a mousetrap. The cheese will remain on the mousetrap forever and it'll stay open or in the loaded position the only way that it snaps is if you touch the cheese. That's the only reason why you would ever do it. So stay in your lane, stay above the standard, and we're good. Not to say that I'm going to snap on you, but there's going to be there's going to be a consequence. And there's both positive consequences and there's negative consequences. And so mm -hmm. when people start to go below the standard, I tell leaders, you have to look at yourself and say, where did I go wrong? Where did this staff think that it was okay or a child or a coworker, whatever, Feel that it was okay to do that, and then where was I? And where was I in everything? Where was my leadership? Where was my my uh, influence? Right. And so, when we had this conversation in the very beginning, to say, "Hey, this is why we hired you, Scott. We hired you because you do this, 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 and this really well, and this is our problem. We have a fifty dollar an hour problem, and you can you can do it. That's why you're getting paid fifty, sixty, seventy dollars an hour, whatever it is." You are that person. And I have to pour value into you and say, hey, I'm ready here for your growth. However, Scott, if you go below the standard, we're going to we're gonna talk. And just having that conversation of when the talk, when the talk comes, it's not going to be uh, demeaning. It's not going to be shame on you. It's going to be like, how can I help you? What Talk to me. Let's, let's talk, right? So you could still discipline with love, but it's got to be consistent for sure. And it's got to be regular. I, I think, and that is that last statement there is a powerful one because that consistency is is one of the hardest parts, and, and I see this particularly in uh, maybe even in more faith based environments. But we have this uh, we have this great grasp of servant leadership, but we almost let it go too far. If that that's not the right language, but we let it we use it as a crutch, uh, and and we don't show up with that consistency. Sometimes, uh, what is the cost of that? What is the cost of inconsistent feedback? Yeah, you you pay for it now, or you're gonna pay for it later, right? Um, I tell companies and organizations that uh, your year, yearly eval sucks. Stop doing a yearly eval because basically, what essentially what you're saying is, hey, this is what you Scott, this is what you did really well in the last nine to ten months. This is what you did really well, but this is where your performance fell short. Well, bro, wouldn't you want that at month two, three, or four? Right. So you can make those course corrections, and so. Because it's inconsistent, now your employees or, again, it goes back to personal development or professional development, in or out of work, you know, at home, out of home, now your kids have dug themselves in the hole or your employees have dug themselves in the hole. And now it's your job to get them out or motivate them to get them out. But if you do a yearly evaluation, they're in a hole too too big that they it's hard to get out of. And so, again, you pay for it now or you pay for it later. Yeah. I get what you're saying when it says, like, sometimes we're too... You know, we're too soft or we, we lean on it as a, as a crutch. I really, truly believe that, uh, and I'm working on this piece for a new, a new uh, training that I'm doing, but they, I, I look at um, the difference between the trust that we have when we drive in the streets compared to when we drive in the highway. Nothing is stopping two cars from going head to head on a street that's 45 miles an hour, let's say, except for a millimeter of paint striped on the road that's the only thing that's stopping them and a couple reflectors right sometimes again when you hit it da -da 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 it brings in it course corrects however when the speed is faster or there's more people so in this yes. instance the freeway then you have a center divide and on both sides there's a wall and then the center divide right so if your organization is going too fast or faster or you have a lot of people you have to have these walls or these boundaries up to keep people in line or they're going to hurt somebody if they go. Imagine if you had a center, just a dotted line in the freeway, on the highway, like there would be fatalities 10 times as more, a hundred billion times more than what they are today. So I think it's important to have those walls. So don't have your 
your kindness be looked at as weakness, right? Yeah. And so you definitely have to have those walls up. Um, and I think it's it's definitely helpful to do so. And then you can say, all right, now we're like a street. Go ahead and go as you as you please. But either way, whether it's a street or a highway, you still have those bumps on the road. And here's the other thing too: they're every couple feet, and they're and they're reflectors. Mm. Every couple months, have a self reflection, have a team reflection, have a staff development, whatever it is. But spend time to reflect. If you hear doom 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 doom, hey, it might be time to reflect, right? Yeah. So. I just love that analogy and I think it, it holds true to a leader to be loving, but you can still discipline through love and be be strong because again, it's the stewardship part of things. We are put in this position to help this company. That's our job. And if we were to ever leave or quit, guess what? They're not going to know our name two or three weeks from now. They're going to bring the next person up and they're going to keep on going, which is why we need to steward that position. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that visual and the idea like we can put a wall up and if you run into the wall, you kind of think, well, why'd you put that there, right? But it's so much better than the alternative. And I, I think one of the points of servant leadership is actually being in that difficult position, right? Rather than, uh, than uh, again, just trying to avoid the issue altogether. I love the analogy of different speeds require different barriers and boundaries. It's fantastic. Uh, so there's a question I like to ask all my guests and it's this. What is the biggest secret you wish wasn't a secret at all? What's that one thing that you wish everybody watching or listening today knew? Yeah, so there's a there's a teaching that I do, and I charge for this, so that everyone's getting this for free. Um, is just uh, the power of alignment. When people are like, "I'm just not happy at work. I'm not happy at home." Um, do a self reflection in your alignment. What are your goals? Um, what it what is your what are your priorities? And then what is your daily schedule? There's a saying that says, um, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are, right? Mm. Show me your schedule and I'll show you what's important to you. If your schedule is wake up in the morning and and eat a good breakfast, go to the gym, have your protein shake, you know, have your meals every couple hours, then I can start to say, oh, you, you value your fitness more than work, maybe more than your family or whatever. Or if there's a mixture of that and then sit and eat with my family and take my, my kids to school and do this and text message my wife or my kids throughout the day. Ah, fitness and family is something that you value. But when you roll over in the morning and you look at your phone first thing and you're scrolling for 20 minutes, guess what? Other people's business is your priority, right? Oh. And so when we find that we're unhappy with work or whatever, my, my first thing is like, how are you aligned? What is your, what are your goals? What are your priorities? And what is your schedule? And sometimes we allow our schedule to dictate our goals and our priorities. Mm. But if we were just to flip it and we had our goals and our priorities dictate our schedule, we would have a completely different life, even at, at work or over our own lives. So this is where I found that this is the secret is when we let our schedules dictate everything else, it's jumbled. But if we put our goals, our priorities dictate our schedule, our GPS will give us direction of where we need to go into our life. Yeah. That is so true. When I look back over uh, you know, kind of periods of my life where I, I did take ownership of my schedule, it, it doesn't necessarily happen immediately, but there's just this sense of progress. There's a sense of reward. There's a, a sense of fulfillment in it. And I think tying it all the way back to your original and point, that's when I'm showing up the most, right? That's when I'm showing up in the moment the most. And I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, working on your schedule is hard to do. Uh, it, it can result in saying no to people or no to things, and you have to make some difficult decisions to do it. But you're right. Uh, it, it, aligning that with your goals is such a powerful, powerful principle. For sure. A purposeful, a, a purposeful no or a well-positioned no will make you a more purposeful and powerful yes, right? I say no now so I can say, you know, yes, yes later for sure. And I think a lot of the issue that a lot of people have is they want motivation, but motivation doesn't come first. Oh, if I just had this, I would get, I, I can get up and I can I can do this. And motivation doesn't come first. Action comes first, right? You have action. Yeah. Then you start to build momentum. And once you have momentum, then you get motivation. And I think a lot of people have it backwards. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I want, I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to uh, turn the camera around a little bit, if you will. But uh, I'm going to have you take off your coach, consultant, advisor hat. I'm going to have you put on your CEO hat, uh, if you will, and talk to us. What's the next stage of growth look like for you and your business? And what challenge will you have to overcome to get there? Yeah, so uh, uh, I've done a lot in person, right? A lot of um, speaking gigs, trainings, keynotes, and I still have those things planned. 
but I think I want I need to utilize like this beautiful office and you know technology and being able to coach more and do things from here and so um I have a couple online courses that I've already have out um but I want to dial them in more so as far as the business is concerned is to dial those things in more um but the other thing is to network I hate networking I'm just it's not one of my strengths uh but I think the next part of the business is hey, you're really good at this level. It's time to get, take it to the next level. And the only way to get to the next level is to network with other people, great people. And so I have quite a few really good, powerful uh, people as far as like just movement and business where I need to check my environment and my circle of friends. And it's time to elevate those circle, that circle of influence. Mm. So it's being around other greater uh, you know, businessmen and, and women and things like that. And so I need to now make my ceiling my floor yeah, and get to the next yeah. level with that way. Yeah. So there's some folks that, you know, they're already feeling the grind of 2024 and it's still early in the year. But as you're speaking, the, the, it's just starting to click, right? It's starting to resonate that either they want to show up more intentionally as a leader. They they want to take ownership of their schedule. They want to align with their goals uh, and, and values. they want to understand their strengths better. How can they find more out about you and the work that you do? Yeah, so uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, there's a lot, I put a lot of content on Instagram. Uh, raise the bar with the Z, R A I Z E. Raise the bar CEO, and then uh, LinkedIn. It's uh, RTB, standing for Raise the Bar RTB dash one, um, and then the website we raise the bar dot com. Same spelling of raise we raise the bar dot com. Um, and yeah, I like right now. I'm getting ready to launch a free six week course. Uh, class is full, and we're those are going to be the founders. Of, of the of the leadership group and basically just trying to position position people to get into better leadership and then once we go through that six weeks those people are going to help me uh bring everything together in one final piece put a bow on it and then we'll launch the 90 day uh leadership course so how do we steward the leader so good. Oh, it's exciting times. Uh, I love it. So head on over to weraisethebar.com. We'll put the uh, link in the URL. Again, that's a Z, not an S on raise. Uh, Juan, thank you so much for being here. What a powerful uh, and and deep conversation. I really appreciate it. And for those of you watching and listening today, you know, your time and attention mean the world to us. I hope you got as much out of this conversation as I know I did. And I cannot wait to see you next time. Take care.